seated. Pastoring is not for a human being. Hold the music. Pastoring is not for human beings. You see how y'all got quiet on me? When you read it in the book of Revelations, God spoke the message to the seven churches through angels. And there are times when God calls his sons and pastors angels. You have to be laced with some heavenly fervor to pastor hard-headed people. I want the first three rows to talk to me. Pastoring is not for human beings. It's for human beings who God has put some extra stuff on to put up with people that you feed and then they bite the hand that feeds them. This side not going to talk. Huh? You pay their rent, you love them, you rebuke them one time and they look for another church. Pastoring can become a very depressing job. Now, Texas, y'all ain't going to do this to me. You're not going to stay quiet while I talk. Because y'all done ran a lot of pastors out of Texas. Bring that back, bring it back just a little bit. Y'all have ran a lot of great leaders because of something they did 20, 30 years ago. I told my church, if you dig in my closet and find something for 30 years ago, I ain't going nowhere. Look at y'all quiet in the front. All have sinned. Can I get some conversations? And have come short. Why? Because you're human. You know, church folk, let me act like we had an anniversary and the pastoral celebration and not just get up here, start prophesying and preaching for y'all. Because the truth of the matter is I'm a son of a pastor. Grandson, give me some more monitors, and great-grandson. And I couldn't stand church folk for what they did to my parents. Take all the church money, never pay back. Y'all ain't talking to me. You license them, they leave with your license and go start a church behind your back. See, y'all celebrating them, but you're not encouraging them. Y'all have had prominent preachers in this Dallas Metroplex attacked black and white they were so nervous and some of y'all acting real desensitized that they resigned then you've got some they still trying to get and all of these pastors are mega preachers and what's the weapon that folk are using the past look at somebody and tell them that's why it's called behind y'all ain't talking yeah, and the Bible says for three folk who will jump and help me, forget those things. I God bless all four of them. Forget those things. I'm not going to stop talking. Forget those things which are behind. If somebody behind you right now is making faces at you, it shouldn't bother you if you didn't look back. All of you, even though you're taking my orders, make mean faces at the first person in front of you right now. All of you. All of you. Yeah. For some of you, it's second nature. That's why you're smiling, because the mean face is your real face. Make a face. The issue is right now, none of what they did behind you should bother you if you didn't turn around. Some of you are too worried about who like you. Every time, let me tell a story. Because I've given honor, it's gonna be a good service. We had church this morning and I begged him, I beseeched him to put me on the flight. And he said no. I love going home more than I like going to church now. Like going home, me and God meet at the crib all the time. We be watching Netflix. 
catching up on prime and family business. Y'all ain't talking. I'm annoying it. I do a little, sisters, because I want to know who killed that boy who should have died. See, some of you so holy, you don't think this should be a part of church. That's why you're only who you are in a church building. But when you're outside. But what is a butterfly? What is a caterpillar? On this note, one of you in front will jump and I'll give you a word from the Lord. A caterpillar is a butterfly waiting. Look at somebody, explain that to them. A caterpillar is a butterfly waiting. What is this caterpillar waiting on to become what it was created to be? It's waiting to survive metamorphosis. That means for ten folk talking, it must go through something by itself. Oh, I got, I feel like the color purple. My God, the dead has arisen. Pass me them biscuits, Harpo. You have to go through this thing by yourself. I've got one rule tonight because I'm going to have church. Don't stand up if you ain't going to speak up. You can look at me and frown from your seat, but if you rise, I want your voice to come with you. What is a caterpillar? It's a butterfly waiting. The butterfly, the strong caterpillar, must go through a metamorphosis by itself. It is also factual, I need four minutes on this story, that if you try to help it come out, you kill it. So all of you that nobody helped is because they would have killed you. I'm trying to help you. The more you open your mouth, the closer you're going to get to where I'm taking you. When you see the colorful decoration of the wings of this flying species, you find out that the blues and the browns and the purples in the wings of the butterfly for the screamers are proof of the struggle. Your blood is all those colors. You don't know it. It's blue in your veins, purple cut. It gets oxidation. It turns red. Y'all quite leave it sitting there, it starts turning brown. Now, I did not say if you're going to stand up. It's proof of the struggle, but if you pull it out, touch the wings, you stop two things. It's life and it's flight. So none of you can go to the next level always letting people help you. You got to earn your wings. Will you tell your neighbor, earn your wings? So two caterpillars hung out while they were caterpillars. One of them went through its metamorphosis, changed. Oh, preach this. And if you don't, do it in the leadership conference. The caterpillar goes into the cocoon by a substance that comes out of its own mouth. It spins its own thread. Look at folk. No, no. The caterpillar feels used like human beings with good nature because everybody takes your silk, but they don't take you. You follow? Caterpillar. See, some of you should be talking to get the pain off you right now. Because the person that used you ain't too far from you right now, right? They're not too far. That's why I'm talking like this. I'm being prophetic, but I got to get you over them not looking for another church. Because the church is your cocoon. Look at somebody and tell them, I got to stay here till my change comes. What happens is the same mouth that spun the cocoon is the same mouth at another season that spits out a fiery liquid that gets them out of it. The same mouth gets them in it is the same mouth that gets them out of it. Let me quote a scripture for my five Christian millionaires. Death and life. 
See, some of you got a license to preach, but you ain't got a license to look because you can't preach. So it's good to eat this while you're learning. Never sit like you're important, and if we gave you the mic, you couldn't finish the phrase. Don't ever grade a class you didn't pass. But they were Kashima, but they were hanging out. He went through his metamorphosis. He came out what he was waiting to become, and that was a what? Butterfly. Figured I'd help you. I don't want nobody to make me feel lonely. Came out a butterfly. And even though he was a butterfly, he still remembered his friend, the caterpillar. And with all the change he had went through, he went and found his old buddy. Let me talk to one talker. He went back to the past. And he thought that his buddy would be excited about his chain. Flew down from the limb in a tree. Got down there and brought a leaf from the tree. Told his used to be homie, let's eat and talk. The caterpillar said, to the butterfly, you think you better than me because you changed. Oh yeah, the butterfly looked at him and said, I'm not better than you, but I have changed. He said, now I didn't think we were gonna have this type of conversation. I thought you were gonna be happy for my change, but you're still eating my leaf. Oh yeah, even though you don't like that I've changed. I brought you something from a higher level to taste. And you still talking to me like I'm on the ground. Yeah. Tell somebody and tell him he won't have to prophesy to me after this. They kept talking. And the only thing that the cat caterpillar could talk about was when they were what they were. The butterfly looked at him and said, listen, this will be our last time hanging out. He said, because you only like the version of me that crawled. I might as well throw a philosophical statement out there for 10 people who scream loud. Nothing welcomes change more than a wet baby, right? Grown-ups will mess on themselves and look around like they didn't do it. But a child will start crying to let you know, I can't live like this. We got some grown-ups in here with soiled spiritual diapers that are sitting right next to you, acting like it ain't me. He told his butterfly, he said, what you don't know, caterpillar, is you have a problem because I just came to tell you this is what's going to happen to you if you make it through your change. I'm not better than you. I'm proof of what you can become. Will you look at somebody and tell them I'm proof of what you can become? So tonight, we don't want to be jealous of one another. We don't want to be envious of each other. We want to praise God for the potential success of the person sitting next to you. Do it now as if you know that they're going to earn their wings. Earn your wings. Now, I don't want to prophesy one by one, be seated, even though the possibilities and the potential to do so, God has equipped me with. But I'm looking at the camera, but I was hoping that the person was here, because I don't even know if this is a real name, but I'm looking for a person with the last name Queen.
whole bunch of queens with the last name queen, not a whole bunch of queens. Yeah, you got to be careful how you're saying it. Yeah, whole bunch of people with the last name queen. All the queens stand up. <laughs> Y'all clapping for the Queen family? I don't know. Are any of you related to someone named Ad Adrienne? Who back there preaching? Yeah, yeah, who was that? Are any of you her? That's your sister-in-law? Are y'all close? Good. I want you to tell your brother Michael. All right. I want you to tell your brother Michael something for me. I'm not stutting y'all. You can already see it. I'm in Florida. She's watching online. See, that's why I said I didn't know if to look at the camera or whatever. But I need you to tell your brother that him and your sister-in-law are going to be revisited by a season of love. Tell your brother-in-law right now, if his wife is watching and y'all scream, tell him he's going from a caterpillar to a butterfly. Tell him he needs to get ready to fly in the tax business. Taxes. I need to know why that young man walked out. Why did you walk out? He's in the tax business. Okay, we just need to prove to these caterpillars what I'm talking about. All right, it is so important that every uh, last name queen in here, married or born queen, God said all of you by February next year will start experiencing debt free and financial freedom. And everybody in here that's not jealous of the queen family. Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You said you said Adrienne is watching. Didn't 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 you tell me that? All right, tell her, don't try to put anything secret in the name of Taylor. That's her original maiden name. Tell her, don't do that. All right, now y'all be seated. See, nephew, you know me. This is why I can't date church girls, because they can't lie to me. They lie too much. The Queen family is about to be supernaturally blessed. Everyone with the last name Brown stand. That's a familiar last name. There should be Browns in every church. Let me say, is this your maiden name, Brown? Maiden name? Somebody lying. Maiden name, Brown. Why y'all pointing at her? I see three people standing. See, you're telling the truth on each other now. Thank you. That's what I need to hear. All the Browns are about to become blessed with new addresses, right? Especially the lady in the middle and the lady named Charisma or Carissa. Oh, she over there. Let me say this to Carissa. Look at me, Sister Carissa. 
Let me say this to you, and I mean it based on your sincere praise and the people that I see love you and the hundreds or thousands in here who ain't talking for you. God says, because you praised him and thanked him, he said, tell you the bonus is it doesn't come empty. And God said, this one won't hurt you. Y'all ain't talking. Yep. Where's that praise with the fruit of your lips? may be seated. Please leave my mic hot like you have it. Don't up and down because I can hear everything. I used to be a sound man. I can hear everything. To the woman in the middle, married named Brown, I think, stand. Yeah, you. This new address is going to make you extremely happy. I don't want you, because of your good heart, letting people move in and out. You've done this for years. See, y'all, I know we always got five people who can't wait till a true prophet strikes out, but it won't be tonight. It's coming, but not tonight. God says, I want to reward her for 38 years. I want to show her in her body, in her family. God said, I will save the rest of the kids myself. But God says, tell her, home sweet home is over your head. And somebody that knows what a Shabbat praise is, use it to the glory of God. Let me preach my little Sunday school lesson. I want about 50 people who are serious tonight, who know we came to celebrate, but we also came because we need God to take us higher, to just jump up and shout, I'm next, as loud as you can. You may be seated. Get your Bibles. I need you to be wealthy enough to send me home on a private jet, on your private jet. Your church ain't even scream on that because they don't see your potential. You don't want your pastor to burn out. God can send two major sport players and join this church and pay for his private jet every year so that he can go and come without stops and TSA and ABC. You ought to want that for your pastor. Lord, help the members today. The book of Luke. And before I go there, the Lord told me to give this word. Based on your behavior, shall these prophecies come to pass. The Lord says, I'm giving great raises next year to all school teachers. God said the next president will sign that document. And I'm talking to the camera to a principal whose name is Patrick Guy. He's in the back. Go get him. You hear me calling him? Work, work, work. 
See, that ought to excite you. He got two minutes. But the school teachers, God says, I'm taking y'all out of Egypt and I'm walking you into the promised land. I'm glad two of you did not quit. Come here, sir. Let me talk to you. I said to this congregation, I said God said the next president was going to sign the document that was going to get all school teachers paid. Then I said he would use a man by the name of Patrick Guy. How are you? Cut the house up a little more. I know you hear clear, but I know what I need to hear. It is, thank you, valuable. Hey, hold on. Maxie, you know him? Come down here and let me show you how good God is. This is wild. I don't know what I'm doing. Introduce yourself to him and tell him what you do and in what district. You understand that language? Because I do not. So if you got together with people like him and a group of people and talked about black education, am I walking down your street? Can you um, then help get this job done for the teachers? If you have people like him and them in your corner, you say yes. I'm going to say one more thing. Uh, I'm going to say one more thing. I'm sorry y'all don't feel this. I'm going to ask God to work a miracle, and it will be a miracle. Somebody shout a miracle. I'm going to ask God to give you a lunch with the governor. Because that's who needs to hear your story. You said that's correct? All right. The governor's not for this. I can't say too much because I don't need to be banned. But you can talk to that man on your right. He's a troublemaker, so you may need a peacemaker. He's like Umar Johnson. He's a troublemaker. But I'm going to ask God to give you a Peter and a John. Your voice is going to herald. It's going to go past the state of Texas. It's going to start going out like an educational Martin Luther King. God says, because of your passion, because of your poise, because of your uh, 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 love for what you do, that he has found the person to get the teachers what they deserve. So everybody scream and clap for this precious. Hold on, stop. You a principal. You a principal. Is superintendent higher than principal? All right, I'm going to speak something. What the bahasiata? That means what you just say to him? Oh, and why you ask him that? Because you know that the superintendents are moving around and you want to know where he was already? Oh, boy, you're about to get hooked up right through here, bud. You ain't going to scream, but your answer might be in your room. That's why I'm hooking people up and you don't see it. God, for some of you, don't even have to walk out this building. 
when I tell you all to praise God for this principle, I'm going to have him touch my son's hand like y'all praying for each other, but y'all going to be agreeing. And I'm going to ask God to do something that's impossible, 90% impossible, even though he knows it's possible. I'm going to ask God to give you the ear of the governor, move you into some type of hierarchy so you can help what's going on. Then I'm going to ask you to remember him so that he can run for mayor. Now, I just heard black people, that ain't going to happen. Not in your world. But if God can raise Moses in Egypt. What you just tell him? You just got a call from the people and they're asking you to consider running for mayor? Okay. All right. At the count of three. See, just because you're still thinking with the mind of a caterpillar, you can't uh, disappoint these butterflies. At the count of three, you got a 30-second yell in you. It's got to be real. Y'all hold hands and watch God take y'all to the next level. Do it now in Jesus' name. Come on, 15 seconds, you can do it. Be seated. Luke chapter 17. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Sound like we got some believers in the building. Sounds like we have believers in the room. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody just shout, Lord, take us higher. Let me give you the backdrop of this Sunday school message because we came to celebrate, not to have revival, so I'm changed the message tonight so that we can just go on home and enjoy the rest of your evening. The story I'm about to read, and Lord, give me five people that will talk to me in Jesus' name. That's three, but I need five. And you that claim to be my friends that don't talk, don't text me after church. I will not be responding. That's a prophecy. And I mean it. Luke chapter 17. Embedded in this chapter for my five talkers is the story of ten lepers. You've heard the story before. But probably not the way you're going to hear it this evening. Ten lepers. You already know that they're going to be healed. As a matter of fact, cut that Leslie switch or cut it down. You will find out for the three who's here this morning, they won't be healed, they'll be made whole. Yep, take a nap if you choose. You're going to nap on your own future. Yeah, the disciples almost did it. Jesus said, now sleep on. I'm tired of repeating the same things. If God frees me, 
I don't want to go back into it. Thank you, healthy conversation is. They get healed. They are made whole. You already know the end of the story because I'm going to go into the crux of it. The other nine are so ungrateful that they keep going without saying thank you. Only one turns back when he sees that he's well. And he finds the source of his miracle. Talk to me, one side. And he looks for him to tell him thank you. And black people ain't good with thank yous. You give them food, they say it's good. Say thank you first. When I grew up, we had more manners than this generation ever saw. Let me talk about it, and maybe the mothers will help me and some older people that's my age, 60s and older. You couldn't wake up and not say good morning. You could not eat food until you said grace. No, y'all ain't talking. Now y'all just be blessed. No, no. You have to say God is grace. God is good. Let us thank him for our food. By our heads must all be fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Y'all ain't talking. Amen. Look at the lost generation. That was a prayer. Then we graduated. Lord, we're thankful for this food. Bless this food. Let it be for the nourishment of our bodies. For Christ's sake. Amen. But when I grew up, I need one person to jump. You couldn't eat till you said a scripture. And now you're eating healthy and still sick because the prescription for good food was prayer. Some of y'all brag, I don't eat meat, I'm a vegetarian. How you get so unhealthy? No prayer. We couldn't go to bed without saying our prayers. Let me help two people who are going to be blessed. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. Then you hopped in bed. I'm going to see who jumps up. And your prayer wasn't finished because you had to say, God bless mommy. Oh, your daddy. And if you had a lot of brothers, Aaron, Damian, Darren, Deshaun, Jeffrey, Erica. You couldn't take candy from the mother of the church unless you said thank you. When preachers used to preach and they had a lot of power, they would stop in the middle of sermons and say, tell God thank you. Where has the gratitude gone? Oh, I'm sorry, Todd, you should have caught that flight, but um, God will not perform miracles where he's not appreciated. And appreciation is found in words. A thank you will take you a long, y'all ain't talking in the front, long way. Now people give you a ride home, you don't even say thank you, just get out the car, see you tomorrow. Then when they don't pick you up no more, what's wrong with you? Number one, I'm not your private Uber. I wish I had people. Because some of us want to help you. We just get tired of helping who does not appreciate the help. All right, maybe I should go a little deeper. Pastor, you can come get your mic in about 20 minutes. Let me go a little deeper. Let's see if women in here will be honest. 
All of the sisters in Christ, daughters and mothers, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, there's more of you than that. But y'all don't leave men for cheating. You leave them for lying. See, fake women, you already knew they could cheat. Because they cheated with you. And you said, that's her bad. She should have knew what to do with him when she had him. But the truth of the matter is there are women created for men with deficiencies. Because a real woman's job, I'm going to jump, is to help her out of order, man, get back to the image of God. Oh, y'all, that takes a special woman. There are two wives in the Bible. One, let me get out of this church. One is in Proverbs 18. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Obtains favor with God. That's a saved average woman. The other woman that's an upgrade is in Proverbs 31. Who can find? See, one can be found. The other one cannot. Her price, oh, y'all don't want me to do a woman's comment, is far above rubies. And she makes her husband great. Because she doesn't tell any of his deficiencies to the public. Because she recognizes I've been anointed to help God put men back in their place. The only thing that type of woman cannot take is a liar. I wish I had some women in here being honest from the hood or raised in some ward or some projects or some ghetto who would tell the truth. You loved your man and when you broke up, you looked him in his face and you told him, Negro, all you had to do. See, I can't get no sisters to help. All you had to do was tell me because I already dreamt it. The Lord showed it to me. I just wanted to see whether you were going to be honest enough to say something because I'm the only one anointed enough to take your truth. So I want to read some of these scriptures. I just gave 10 women some women's conference messages. I know I did. Verse 11, it came to pass as they went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. He entered into a certain village. Verse 12, there met him 10 lepers, 10 men that were lepers. They stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, I'm preaching about Jesus, have mercy on us. Let me pause and say this for 30 folk who will jump up. You're going to get your miracle because you want somebody else to get one also. Tonight is a night for unselfish individuals. There is no me tonight. There's a us. I think I should talk about lettuce, which is the basis of a salad. Lettuce. Let us. It's, it's the basis of a good salad. Let me say this and see if a man will jump in a woman. Every time you do what a prophet says, you get closer to a miracle. You don't know that. I'm tired of all that jumping. When you go to the gym and you go to a certain class, you're supposed to keep moving. You don't lose weight going. I go every day. You dress like it. Never sweat because you didn't put in no work. You got to put in work tonight. So let me say this for 10 people. Even God himself, when he made everything, he did it solo. But when he made man, he said, let us. Oh, y'all, 
Everybody go miss it. I'm a priest for your great, great nephew. Hold on. He said, let us make man in our image. All of you that are selfish, your day is over. But when you can say, God, whatever you do for me, do for my neighbor, do for the person behind me. If God said, I'm going to give you a million, you can say, you can down mine to 800,000. Give him 50, give her 50. God's ready to bless those that want to be a good salad. He said, let us make man. Oh, I'm coming. Whoever said that going to make me preach too. That's what I'm used to in my church. Verse 14, they saw him. And when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Let me pause and say all the things you've heard before. Because when I get to the hollow, which is not far, you're going to wish that you had heard everything else. Fifty of you catch this and then shout amen. You were getting it on your way here. The reason why it's going to fully be done when you walked in here was to show somebody else what God can do. I got help. The miracle was not done in church. It was done on their way. So that's why your biggest fight from a demon is not to go. I'm sleepy. I'm tired. I worked overtime. I caught I caught the first service. I can't catch the night service. I watch it online. Because he knows as long as you're not headed in the direction of the temple, your miracle is on pause. But once you get up tired, sick, angry, and start your car or pay for an Uber and head in the direction that you should go, God says, I need you there as proof of what I can do. Look at somebody and tell them, I don't need a miracle. I am a miracle. Tell them, if I told you half of my life story, you wouldn't believe that I made it this far. Some of you look so good for the stuff that you said you went through. Some of us are the Lord's receipts. That he's still able to do exceeding. Come on, don't wait till I hoop. Let me help. Abundantly. Above all that I could ask or think. Let God use you as proof. Come to church not to get a miracle, but to show someone that miracles still exist. Let me preach to myself. I've been lied on, cheated, too old, talked about, mistreated. I've been buke, not rebuke, buke, scorned. Where's old school? Talked about. Sure, I've been up, down, almost level. But as long as I've got Jesus. Let me talk to talk, because I got it, I got it, something about the Holy Ghost. I can't explain it, but I got it. I feel my help, boy. And as they went, showed themselves to the priest, they were cleansed. Verse 15, one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. I want to use verse 15 to just bring out one more thing. Then I'll read the next three verses, four verses, prophet, one other verse, braid the hair, and we can get out of here. But let me say this to 15 loud people. Before you leave here tonight, Give God one last loud praise so your past will know you ain't coming back, right? Because the last time your past saw you, you were crying, depressed, drained, fed up, 
You cannot let your past have that final picture of you. I'm going to free some of you to cut the fool tonight in a minute. He turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Fell down on his face at the Lord's feet giving him thanks. Unfortunately, this person was a Samaritan. I thought I had preachers preaching me, but I, he was a stranger. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus proves in 17, 18, and 19 that he keeps record of who he blesses who does not bless him. Front row, you're fired, not you. Second row, talk to me. Jesus keeps record of who he blesses because in verse 17 he said, were there not 10 of you? He said, I remembered how many I blessed. So, oh, y'all quiet. How did he bless you when you were struggling, you were screaming, now you got a new car and you don't scream no more? I'm almost there. You were single and dancing, now you're married acting preppy. What happened? God should take you back to the place in life where you were the loudest. Now let me come back. Were there not ten cleansed? But where are, he, can, he keeps record, where are the other nine? Eighteen, they are not found that return to give glory to God except this stranger. Then he said to the stranger, arise, go thy way, thy faith, y'all heard this this morning, has made thee what? Let me read one more verse, Psalms 98 verse 4. When I read this, I will give you my two topics, I will read two paragraphs and find a who somewhere in the F. But Psalms 98 verse 4, when I read it, some of you exercise the text. Make a joyful noise. Not for people. This scripture uh, shows us that God loves noise. When did the black church versus the European church, when did y'all swap DNA? So when I grew up, yelling was a part of the fabric of a holiness church. The mother said, ho, oh, hey, hey, ho, oh, hey. Now you scream. They think you got a demon bring you some water and a fan. What? When did this happen? I'm talking to five folk who won't talk. And when we swapped it out, the miracles ceased also. Church was quiet too long. You would hear out of nowhere for those who grew up in church, one of the mothers methodically and intentionally would be like, he's in the room. Once you heard that, people started, hey, thank you, Jesus. Now it seems like God is only in the room when the music's playing. says and his praises I'm going to preach wherever shall continually beware then it said my soul shall make her boast in the Lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I wish I had five people. Now you go from me to us. Oh, magnify. Don't let me get my house paid off by myself. Don't let me be the only one healed of high blood by myself. 
If somebody else is screaming, why not join in when the Bible says when one rejoice, y'all still not talking loud enough. Let the redeemed I, 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 I feel my Noel Jones coming, but I, uh, uh, that's my boy. But I want to tell you a story from an amusement park. See, some of you are in here. You are treating God like you in kiddie land riding a merry-go-round. When you ride the merry-go-round, which is for kids, I'm going to see who scream is men. You have to have a wild imagination to believe that horse real. Only kids have that. They be like, giddy up, horsey. And if you're from the hood, you'll turn back and be like, look, mommy, no hands. That cut that horse ain't real. Oh, y'all missing it. But when you go in the big section and go on roller coasters, I'm going to see who scream on this. Number one, you got to have patience because the line is long. Uh -oh. Some of you too quiet to know you're about to get on the ride next. All quiet folks should go to the back of the line and let somebody exciting in the front because a roller coaster ain't fun if the two folk in the front row don't set the atmosphere for everybody behind. That's why I said, put screamers back on the front row. Stop having special seats for bishops and pastors who don't praise. A preacher without a praise is a fraud. That's why he preached so well, because he can't do nothing else. The line is long. It goes horizontal. Then you get to a place where you think you're next because you've gone through the long line. Then there's some steps. So you got to go through on the ground. Then you got to go through another thing going up. Uh -oh. Now, you can't go to that next level. I need a screamer if you don't measure up. Because they say, for this ride. Uh-oh, you yeah. Some of y'all want a million dollars. You don't measure up. Some of you are crying over a boyfriend. You ain't ready for no husband. If a boyfriend can make you suicidal, what you got left for your husband? See, the boyfriend is the merry-go-round. The husband is what you waited for. Oh, Lord Jesus. What was my one rule? If you're going to stand up, speak up, and you ain't doing it yet. I was on that ride, and I got to the steps. And when I got to the steps, a little short white young boy said to me, Mister, you ever rode this before? I said, no. You scared? Oh, yeah. I didn't want to admit it, but I told him a little bit. He said, I have ridden this ride several times. I'll ride with you. I said, don't tell nobody I'm scared. We got up to the top. We're next. He's now the professional on roller coaster rides. He looked at me. He said, even though you're next, don't go yet. And if I say this and you miss it, I've messed up the sermon. Just because you're next don't mean it's your turn to go. You got to know where you want to sit. And sometimes because of preferred seating, you've got to let somebody else. I'm almost there. Some of you in here, I said you wouldn't need a prophecy, but God wants you to know this. Then you scream and tell him thank you. He said, after this month, I'm giving you preferred seating. I promise you. You will sit in rooms, spaces, and places that you didn't have degrees for, you don't have the tongue language for, but God said, I've reserved you a seat. 
I'm talking to talk. And when you go, take somebody else with you. It's not fun at the top by yourself. We got up there, he said, mister, don't go yet. We waited three more rounds of watching people pass us. He said, we can go now, the front seat. I didn't want the front seat. <laughs> got in front, they come by, I'm gonna see if you mind there, and they click that bar. And if you're nervous, you be like, are you sure that's as far as it can go? <laughs> see, you're, you're not talking. You be like, click it one more notch, click, all right. The little Caucasian young white boy looked at me and this is what he gave me, rules, and I'm gonna see if you follow them rules. He said, number one, take your hands off the bar. You look scared. Stop being so stiff. Whatever you're holding on to. Oh, y'all quiet. Yep, this side catching it. Y'all almost there. He said to me, mister, when the ride start pulling off, it's always slow. Raise your hand. Not when things are going fast, but when they're going slow. Then he gave me the final rule, and let's go back to the text. 50 catch. He says, scream on your way up. He said... Folk who scream going down is because they're afraid. You scream going up because you have expectation. So. When life's troubles come your way. I enjoy your passion. Hold your head up high and say. Hallelujah. I rode that ride with my hands up. I became a professional in one round. My world was going this way, that way. It even went upside down. The boy said, you good. He said, now I don't know whether you've got the spirit of the roller coaster by how you act when the ride is over. He found out I had it, and I'm gonna see if 30 of you jumped for five seconds. When, I, when the ride finished, I didn't mind running back around to a long line. Oh, y'all don't hear me. Because I wanted that experience one more time. I rode one ride all day. And every ride gave me a different experience. The last time I rode it, because it took about 45 to an hour every time I rode it. The last time I rode the ride, I'm going to see if a man over here will jump and if a woman over there will go crazy. I became the little white boy. I found somebody. You ever rode a roller coaster before? No, sir. Well, listen. Let me take you through this. Now, I'm going to say this, then we're going back to the Bible, then we're going to holler, 10 folks scream on this. You went through all you went through because you got to teach somebody what to do next. It goes from me to we. The picture is bigger than you. I'm talking to only eight people. Now, I thought it'd be more than eight. Some of you went through hell because when you come out of it, your whole family comes out of it. No one else in your family could have stood the test but you. Yep, they're almost ready. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth make a loud noise and rejoice. And sing praise. Right before you walk out, right before you walk out, I know you got something to do. Let me give you the topic and then go do what you do and I'll see you in a few. Here goes my two topics and I need y'all to scream on the second one. But you that are educated, scream on the first one. 
The first topic is called stage four. Stage four. Somebody shout stage four. stage four. The subtopic for those who want a miracle today before you get home is let me clear my throat. Let me clear my throat. Let me. Oh, we're here to celebrate, ain't we? Y'all remember. Da -na 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 -na. The days of preaching just because we can preach. That's over. Help me preach now, five of you Baptist folk. I'm going to church. The days of preaching just because you can, that's over. Most folk are no longer anointed to preach. They practice. They practice their hoop. They practice with their organist. They practice. Ain't no oil. That's all gas. But when your preaching is real, I need five of you, your preaching is followed with signs, wonders, and mighty deeds. I can't get help. Mark 16 said, and these signs I'm gonna, shall follow them that believe. Help me preach. In my name they shall cast out devils, drink any deadly thing and shall not hurt them. Take up serpents, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. They shall speak in new tongues and etc, etc. Then it goes down to verse 18 and 19 and it says this for the screamer. And they went forth preaching the word, the Lord with them performing signs. We need sermons followed by miracles. And I want 10 of you to know, because of 10 lepers, you ain't leaving here without one tonight. And once God gives it to you, there's going to be a chain of events that take place. You will not be the only one debt free. Debt free will be over there, over there. You will not be the only one healed from anxiety. Someone else will be healed. God says, I'm going to do many at once. The only people that will be left out are the selfish. Please don't take this. I've got 15 minutes, Sean, didn't hit me. Please don't take this personally or wrong for my five people who are not talking. The church has lost her voice. The world don't respect us no more. The media don't respect us no more. Movies make fun of us. Comedians talk. Why y'all ain't talking now? There was a day they wouldn't talk about the church, wouldn't cuss around Christians, wouldn't smoke around the mothers. They dare not do anything around holy ground. Oh, I got help. Is about to reinforce our voice. The church has had laryngitis for a few years. But God's about to go into our esophagus and fine tune the voice of the church where the world will run back to us and say, What is the will of the Lord? What is the message that we should preach? Jesus saves. See, too boring for you. Just too boring. You want to hear he pays off houses. But what you don't want to hear after he pays off your house is what does it profit a man? Oh, now it's quiet. To gain. Because you doing better don't mean you are better. You follow me, don't you? What does it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose his soul? I want to talk to three people because I can't get five. I'd rather have Jesus. Make me preach and watch what happens. More than silver, gold. I'd rather have Jesus more than riches untold. Then there's another song that says some folk would rather. I thought y'all were old school. Have houses, land, silver, Go. These things they treasure, they forgot about their soul. Can I get help? But I've decided to make Jesus my choice. The road has been rough. 
I'm almost there. And the going has been tough. I feel my throat clearing. And the hills have been hard to climb. But I, I started out. A long time ago. There's no doubt. Y'all are pushing me in my mind. That I've decided. I got 15 minutes to make Jesus. My choice. Let me testify for 50 of you with a mouth. If I'm the first leper I need nine more talkers. I've had some good days. Am I the only one? I've had some weary days. And unfortunately, I've had some sleepless nights. But when I look around, all you quiet, selfish folks sit down, and I try to think things over. I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. And I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord. Why? So much pain. But he knows. He knows. He knows, he knows what's best for me. Even though my weary eyes cannot see. All I want to say is, come on, y'all missed the thank you part. All I want to say is, I won't complain going to my last level of preaching nine were Jews the other one was a Samaritan they don't hang together neither do they get along let me free you from your past by telling you this and to the 30 that starts jumping and you would have to jump to get it you'll be free from public opinion and that's this the only reason why they're all hanging together is they've got the same problem And I'm tired of having friends with problems. I need relationships with solutions. Yeah. I need somebody to tell me I'm too anointed to be acting like this. I need somebody to tell me God's hand is upon me and they're not jealous that his hand is on me. Stop making relationships out of problems. Got the y'all y'all sisters. We all divorced. High five. What? Domestic abuse. I want to be the face of domestic abuse. Why? When is somebody going to be the face of Jesus? Look at somebody. Tell them these words. They don't get happy. Don't talk to them for four straight minutes. And I mean it. Just tell them trouble don't last always. trust in Jesus I've learned I'm not there to trust in God hey diamond I've learned to depend all right let me let me scroll and just go here on this note stomp your right foot with the nice shoe on and five you scream Jesus would have never seen them if he didn't hear them He would have passed by them, but all ten said, Jesus, Master. He would have never seen them if he didn't hear from them. Your sound is making you visible. Silence keeps you right where you are. I'm crying, Savior. 
Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling. This young man going to preach better than both of us. Do not. Did you let Kuse Bronticetsan? It's in Mark 6. You may have never read it. It's in all of the Gospels about the ship that was in the midst of the sea tossed with the waves. Peter walked on water. But in one particular version, which is Mark's version, it says these words. And I want five folk who know God's about to turn your life around to scream louder than you ever scream. It said, and when Jesus saw them toiling and rowing, he would have passed them by. That meant he was never going to help them until somebody on that boat cried out, Jesus! Somebody, all of them were in the same boat. But somebody in that boat had to holler out and said, Jesus! I felt that he had mercy, bid me to come. None of the other stories, frat, none of the other stories mention Peter's name. Did you preach that? I'm sure you preached the whole Bible. But none of those stories mention Peter but Matthew. Mark don't talk about it. Luke's version don't talk about it. John don't talk about it. If I say why and one of you run, you'll be blessed forever. Watch this. Number one, nobody wanted to give credit to who opened his mouth. But everybody wanted credit for what happened. None of them except Matthew mentions Peter. Peter's name ain't mentioned in John's version, Luke's version. But Matthew is sterile because he's a CPA. Oh, see, you didn't read that either. He's into taxes. He details yeah. And he detailed, none of us would have got out of this if Peter didn't take a step. Peter was loud. I then said, I don't want to talk about it. I don't need Peter to be recognized. Y'all need to stop looking to be recognized by certain people, even the ones you helped. And I'm going to tell you why. Then you got 30 people who better jump and turn around or you missed it for the second time. And that's this. Your story is too big for their scripture. I need to tell you. That's why Peter got a first Peter. He got a second Peter. He all in the book of Acts. Your story too big for you to just get a verse in somebody else's story. You didn't mention my name. Don't mention me. Because I got a story that I need to tell. Four things, then let's go to church. They're hanging together because the only thing they have in common is the problem. Right after they all get healed from leprosy, give me one man, they all leave the Samaritan alone. Certain people only like you because y'all got the same issues. But once you switch up, and get delivered, they going to show you who they really are. Oh, look at you. Oh, So you like the old version of me. You don't like Todd Hall 2.0. Four things. On this, you can start. Ready? Leprosy is when out of nowhere, you start losing your pigmentation. Let me say it like this for talkers. Your life gets spotty. Some things become very visible that draws unnecessary attention. What's that on your head? Why your eye red? Why you been crying so much? The first step to a miracle is your private business must go public. Touch somebody and tell them that I'm making it through phase one right now. Two, you go to the priest, and the priest, not the doctor, the priest, not the physician, the priest. 
Oh, y'all, you go to the priest and the priest examines you and tells you how many days you need to be in seclusion. They tell you if it's bad enough that you have to quit your job and leave, stay away. If it's real bad, they tell people stay away from you. They tell them don't come to your house, don't sit on the couch, don't go into your bedroom because if you do, now you have to be quarantined for seven days. All right, they had that stage one. How many stages I told you? Oh yeah, you that said it, you're about to be blessed. Stage one, my business went public. Stage two, it attacks, y'all don't want to hear me, your fingers and your toes. It, it's called phalanges. When you get to that stage, you start losing feelings in your hands and your feet. Some of you are in stage two right now because you no longer care about what folks say you can't feel. That side ain't talked at all. Y'all gonna have leprosy for a long time. No feelings. You start becoming desensitized. You're in church, but you really don't feel nothing. Somebody buys you a gift, you really don't like it. You watch TV and can't find nothing out of 500 channels. You're hungry, but you don't know what you want to eat. That's stage two. How you feel? I don't really know. Stage three. Somebody shout three. Is those toes and those fingers, I'm coming, fall off. They just, you wake up and they're lying in the bed. See, y'all preached about spots, but you didn't preach about stages. Because when you ignore one stage, it escalates to another stage. If you lose your fingers and toes, would you jump for me if I preach this? You lose the ability to grip and to balance. You can't hold on to anything that's yours. I got paid, but the money's gone. I got a new house, but now I need a second job because I can't pay the mortgage. See, I can't get you to talk now. He's a good man. I don't know why we didn't make it. Stage three. What's the next stage? Let me hear F. What's the next stage? Let me introduce you to what that stage consists of and to the 200 that start jumping and standing, you're almost there. It now attacks your throat. It attacks your larynx. Tell some of you that are in stage four who will start using it to make the devil mad, and I want you to use it well. When you praise in pain, you're an expert. Uh-oh, I think everybody. When you can scream and don't know why you're screaming, tell God thank you but don't have nothing to show for it. You're not just a praiser. You're an expert. You refuse to accept the final stage. Because after stage four, it's death. So ten men hanging together, ready to go to church. Be whispering to each other all day. What are we going to eat? Where are we going to live? <clears throat> you got any 
your children? Yeah. How many? Nine. Hey, Coleman, what's their names? Ask me later. It's killing me. And while they're trying to communicate to each other, they see Jesus. One of them looks at the other and says, hey, help her. What? Help. One says to number two, says to number three, I don't care how much pain this causes. We cannot let the cure get out of here alive. Uh, they start coughing. Some bleeding. Some coughing up white polyps. Because they decided if we're going to die, we're going to die calling Jesus. Uh oh, y'all. The last thing life is going to hear from me is the name that I call. They said, it's going to take all ten of us to call him as one voice. Oh, yeah. Because if we call him individually, he won't hear us. But if we pull together, y'all ain't gonna make it ever. I, I, I know it's hurting. Now I wanna cry, but if we call him uh, together, Ooh, we don't have enough voice. I might as well tell three of you who would jump. Sound travels. Words don't. S sound travels. Words. Voices together. The voices amplified. And they had enough sound left to say, Jesus! While they called Jesus, he turned around. He saw them. He started drawing closer. Not to the disease, but to the sound. Uh -oh. I wish I had a turn. Somebody in the crew probably kept calling him, Jesus. He got closer to them because their voice got more faint. Jesus, he said, you ain't got to scream no more. Go ahead and mouth my name. He said, the first sound you used was good enough. He inhabited their sound. Y'all getting quiet now. And he said to them, what is your request? They said to Jesus in a monotone voice, please just give me my voice back. Just. What they were asking. 
for three folk ain't talking is put my situation in reverse. If you give me my voice back, the first thing that will come out of my voice is how good God is. Lean on somebody that's a part of your miracle team and tell them God is about to give us a miracle. Tell that same neighbor, if you're part of my group, don't wait until the battle is over. Shout. And that word shout is not dancing. But that word shout means elevate your tone. Increase your pitch. Make sure that God does not get out of here without blessing you. Look down your row and find at least five people that are crazy enough to yell that never yell and tell them, is your situation urgent? Tell them, if it's urgent, God don't need your words. All he need is your sound. David said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. What I want y'all to do is stay away from the real disease called silence tonight. And find somebody who believes that by tomorrow you'll have something to scream about. Because I believe that God is going. I feel help. To do this within the next 24 hours. Ah, uh, Lord. And I'm telling the Lord tonight. Anyway, you bless me. I will be satisfied. Y'all better grab a loud person's hand and tell him in the word of God. waiting on the music what the Lord has done for me lean on somebody and tell them in the book of Joshua God gave a whole city to the people that shouted so your little scream should get you a house in that city should get you education in that city we troubles come your way I made up in my mind that for God I'll live and for God I'll die you need to grab somebody's hand and tell them I'm going to praise him whether you do or not because I believe come on act like you can preach that there's a God somewhere is in my mouth because every time I turn around the Lord keeps on blessing me I know that there are certain people that don't like noise I'm one of them but when I get in the presence of the Lord I give him something that I reserve just for him and that is my voice. That is my mouth. That is my sound. Touch your neighbor and tell them when you finish screaming. Then say debt free. When you finish screaming. Then say paid off. When you finish screaming. Then say it is mine. The devil thought he had me. But I got away. Yeah! 
Yes, Lord. Grab somebody else's hand and look them in the eye now and say, oh, neighbor. Congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life. If that person did not get excited, find somebody else with them out. Look them eyeball to eyeball and say, well, they, I just dropped by to tell you tonight, congratulations on surviving the worst season of your life. Shake their hand like a salt shaker and say, neighbor, Oh, neighbor, I've got four scriptures that I'm going to quote out of my mouth to see how you respond. On the fourth scripture, if your holler is strong, you will be out of stage four. Here's the first scripture. It says, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Look at your neighbor and say, did that move you at all? Tell him, if not, here's the second scripture. No weapon. No. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. If that neighbor ain't happy yet, let their hand go. Because here goes the third scripture. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. Tell your neighbor if that did not excite you. I've got one more scripture. And based on your response, will determine your miracle. Here is the last scripture. Yay! Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff Prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. That now anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely, I said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. no more but tell you neighbor I've got a surprise for you and I've got an announcement to make tell him whatever God's about to do for me he's about to do that and more for you but I promise that if you open your mouth tonight God is gonna bless your going in and your coming out and if anybody ask you, what's the matter with you? Tell them I'm saved. I wish 
Hold someone's hand. Look at me. We're about to close. I want about 100 of you to scream these three words. They could be four. And when you say it, if you believe it, I want to hear the sound after it. Just look at that neighbor with passion and power and tell him, it's already done. It's already done. Oh. Already. You believe it. You sound like you believe it. Let's close right here. Right now what you're doing is your sound is traveling. So if your sound has debt free in it, debt free is bouncing off the wall. You that are quiet, you are saved. But there are certain things you don't qualify to get. You're going to heaven, but you're going to have a little hell on earth. Lord Tomahashia, thank you, Jesus. You told Shimanan Sibrota, but I thank him. Hold on, the Lord is here. The Lord is here. You can feel him, but the Lord is here. Listen to I'm going to close, then you can high five me. They get healed, cleansed. Look at me, superintendent, then you can have the mic. They get a tashkota, they get healed as they go. But the one that comes back is made whole. The other nine aren't. Y'all missed it. You can get the first phase of your blessing and miracle and lose it because of not having gratitude. The thank you seals the deal. So I'm gonna try something right now, just for 30 seconds. Everybody don't have to do it, but the majority that do, I'm gonna take you back to 1972, when I grew up in storefront churches and understood why they were loud. I'm gonna tell you to do something, you're gonna do it with power, with speed, and loud, and God said, by tomorrow you'll see the results. I want you to clap your hands and tell God thank you. Clap your hands and tell our God thank you. Open your mouth and tell God thank you. Thank you. Now you see how cool some of you were? You didn't get it. That's that church foolishness. When it's urgent and your pins on it.
The Lord loves this sound. You that are watching by social media, come on and tell him thank you. All right, hold your neighbor's hand. Give me five minutes, not offering, to close this sermon. Touch somebody. You can't catch what you already have. So four folk with a cold don't need to avoid each other. Just because you look better than your neighbor don't mean you're doing better than your neighbor. Right now you're transferring something. And you that were loud, you're the cure, not the cause. You gave God an environment for him to inhabit. Oh Lord. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. Jesus. My soul loves you. Thank you. Hatata Basho. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Lord. Oh. Oh, Lord. All right, look at me. Let me talk to the pastor, his wife, and close this. Don't let that person go. They need you. I'm not talking about y'all, but listen to me, superintendent, pastor. The words say, and you may want to preach this, it's risky. The words say in the scripture for two screamers, when he saw he was healed. Something changed visibly. Did a finger grow back? Did a toe reconnect? Did the spots leave? Well, I want to say this for a screaming man like him. He's been pushing me, the young man and five of you. If you got me out of four, you can get me out of three. And if you get me out of three, you might as well get me out of two. No, y'all, and if you get me out of two, you might as well get me out of one. And when I'm out of one, I'm restored. But the first thing he needed to get out of was silence. Your sound, God sees. Your sound, he sees. He looks in the direction of sound. He does not care what you look like. He cares what can I do about what I see you in. He had to give him his voice back. Look at me, we're closing. Because he knew that ninth person, that tenth person, was going to go tell it everywhere. If I give you this, I was going to hold it. But if I give it to you, at least call me one day and say thank you. If you've not preached it. If you preached it, just act like it was something new. Here it goes for the 100 screamers who's serious. When you first read about the lepers, it takes ten voices to get loud. The way you know he's healed from stage four is when he comes back alone, he cries out with a loud voice. Oh yeah. He doesn't need nine more voices. You are not healed until you can do it yourself. Pay your own house off. Pay your own bills. And if somebody comes, that's just a benefit. But I want God to put me in a place where I can do it for myself. You didn't read that verse? And he came back and glorified God with a loud voice. The emphasis is on loud because he could not be heard before then without nine more people. God says, tell all of you that need a miracle, 
Stop looking at the pastor and the prophet to talk to him. Talk to me yourself. And be loud when you talk to me. Stop being cute and be expressive and let the devil know you done messed with the wrong one tonight. When I wake up tomorrow at seven in the morning, I'm expecting some things that were out of order to be reattached. My balance will come back. My grip will come back. My complexion will return. But most of all, you're going to hear me for the rest of your life. You're holding the hand of a debt-free child of God. Yep. I thought I was about to just close, but the Lord says, Todd, you won't know. Only I will because I'm God. When you tell them scream, I'm going to bless the section that's the loudest. Don't do it yet. He said, no man will know what section is the loudest but me. God says, I will judge it. He said, but to that section, you will never go through the hell you've ever been through another day in your life. And from that section, sound will trap. Now put a Jesus on that yell. Call the name Jesus as loud as you can. Hold that hand for the last time. Come stand near me. Stand near me. Young man, step out. Stand before me. Face me. What is your name? Tracy what? Tracer. Tracy what? Um, What's your last name? Pierce. Pierce. I hope you don't mind whose parents, who are his parents? You are? You don't mind me and Pastor Green transferring our spiritual authority to this young man. He's also, because of your prayers, going to become a genius in school. He's a little sidetracked. But his grades and his test scores are going to show that he's ingenious. I'm going to ask God to give you his preaching ability, but my prophetic ability. Young man, your life will never be the same after this. You understand me clearly? What I want you to do after he has touched you and prayed for you, look at me. This is the left hand, right? I want you to then run from me in your first prophetic mandate from us. Run to your mother, grab her left ring finger and say, it's okay. He come out so. Uh -oh. He is no longer your assignment. He's God's servant. It's time for you to live again.
come stand in front of him. I want you to treat him as if he would be your son because they will one day preach together. They will be a part of that generation that will get rid of the leprosy. When superintendent, pastor, servant of God, a prophet in his own right, lays both hands on the head of this young man, this young man, whenever he recovers from his praise, runs to his mama and anoints that finger. All of you that are screaming while he's being blessed, God said, by tomorrow, your biggest problem will be resolved. Do it now in Jesus. And because some of you did scream and didn't play, the Lord told me to tell you this. Every woman in here with a son, he shall be saved this year. Even the 10 that's behind prison bars, God said, I will get him tonight. Do we have any pastors in the building? Ordained, duly licensed, ordained pastors. Do we have any pastors in this building? What is, what is your name, sir? Scream it out loud. Gregory Tate. And who's the woman to your right? That's your wife. I need to say this to you, and I'm hoping you believe it, and then we'll scream for you. When the people were screaming, the Lord said, find the pastor and tell him within a seven mile radius is his, is his new building, your church building. Uh-oh, I don't, oh, he gone. See, that's how you act. To the other young man that looks like your church is restarting or should in the green. Where's the other man? What's your name? Gerald what? How long you been pastoring? I said it's new, huh? I want to say something to you. Number one. God wants to repair relationships that have should have never broken. You've got to go back and repair some bridges. Quick. You married? You got to learn to listen to the prophet. She's the prophet. To ignore her is to ignore God's voice. You got her against certain people's wishes. Make them wrong, don't make them right. But God said, when you run, he's doing two things, but he has to do it in a different order, and you'll have to run and we'll scream for you. He said, tell him instead of finding him the church first, I'm going to give him to give her a house. Go get your house. Uh-oh, he gone, and y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh. She gone too. Yeah. God is a God of order. 
He will not wreck your house because of him. Uh oh. Hey, Brother Mitchell, how long you been married? Five years in February? How many children? Three. Any of them girls? The Lord said, tell you this. The youngest child is the chosen child. God said, this child will play, preach, see, prophesy, dance. And the one that should have died is a miracle. Y'all ain't talking to me. The Lord said, when your wife ran, the casket was canceled and closed. And somebody with a loud mouth ought to shout, yeah. That's prophetic. Did he, did he rub your finger? Did he rub the right finger? Good. I want to say to the woman to the left of you, have you been to the doctor recently? What did they say? Everything? I'm going to tell you something, and there's no need to fear. There is something going on in your body. It's hidden. It's within, it's hidden by some tissue. It's supposed to never be seen or found. That's why they cannot find anything. But you can feel things at times. You know I'm okay, but something's not right. God said by 11 o'clock tonight, he's going to dissolve what that thing is in your body. You will be healed totally, made whole from the crown of your head, and somebody in that section ought to get as loud as you can. This is it. Hold hands of someone you choose to touch them. Let it be your choice. Hey, my man, that's security for me. I don't remember your name first or last. Give it to me. Chad what? Paskins? P-A-S. I remember us talking about your brother thing, but I can't remember anything when I'm prophesying. How long have you been married to this wife? Did you hear the way I asked the question? Was it strange or was it on time? Tell me. Was it strange or was it on time? On time. The Lord said the enemy would love to give you a repeat performance, but to ex You're not supposed to succeed in this relationship thing. Why? Because you're a prophet. You think it's your brother. It's you. Danasukai! To be very honest without Messing with you, you should have been a pastor. That's why you can tell who's fake, who's real, who's not of God. This is not given to a regular citizen. God said, but I'm sending the angels to fight for your marriage, to fight for your money, to fight for your ministry. I don't hear nobody. Failure is not an option. You're about to become a success story. The Lord said, tell him, I never skipped over him.
I just waited. Now, I don't know my Ashiakalakosembe. I don't know why the Lord is telling me this to tell you. He said, I want you to tell him. The only reason why I'm making you talk to him is because. Give me, give me that. The only reason why I'm making you talk to him. Thank you. Leave it like that. That's how the first mic should have sound. The reason why I'm making you talk to him is he believes in me. He believes in church, but he needed a direct word from a prophet. His belief in preachers began to dwindle. Said, Todd, he even respects you, but he does not get down with this stuff. He said, but tell him before December the 12th, I'm going to have his whole life back on track. And somebody with a loud sound. Hello, sir. Paskins, is your wife in this building? Where? I'm going to have you go over there and dance and jump with yours and let the devil know he's a loser. Someone with a loud mouth. That marriage is out of stage four. Hey! 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 At the count of three, do me a solid favor on my way out of Texas. All of you that know your life has been a little difficult, but you've never stopped trusting in God. It's been difficult to hold on to what you believe. The past five, six, seven years have drained you. God said at the sound of the music, dance as if tomorrow is today. He said you have 90 seconds and those that do it, God said, by seven in the morning, I'm gonna show you what quick fix look like. You got 90 seconds.
do me a favor. If you want to see God bless you with more than you've had, see if you can be blessed enough to make someone else dance with you. If you find the right person the first time around, God said, I'll bless both of you with double. You got five seconds to find them, and hopefully it's the right one.
The Holy Ghost is in here. And some of you are missing it. That sounds like your throat is clear. My, my, my. My, my, my. My, my, my. Oh, ta, 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 man, so. This is a healthy ministry. This is healthy. This sounds like wholeness. If you haven't praised them all service, something's deeply wrong with you. That the God that wakes you up every morning is not deserving of public praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to see the results. You're going to walk in it. You're going to possess it. Then you're going to be blessed enough to share it with someone. Hey, hey. 
Hey, hey! Don't let him go. If you got his attention, keep it. On the piano, give me a F sharp. D flat, D flat. Let me hear it. 